So this is just one slide quickly to tell about AMP. So this company was is headquartered in UK. And basically, ARM is known for its range of risk processor core designs. They never manufacture their silicon own. ARM doesn't manufacture their silicon. So this is the one thing which you have to keep it in mind. Basically, the silicon vendors like NXP, um, Samsung, or ST, Atmel, which is microchip, or Nordic, Newbotton, any, any silicon semiconductor vendor who manufactures or develops the ICs, they license the IP core from our at a very um, from ARM team at a very higher cost, and uh, to that IP core processor core, they'll put their own set of peripherals. So hope the team understands what is peripherals. It's technology peripherals, timers, UART, I2C, SPI, ADC, DAC, USB, Ethernet. This can be SD card, MMC or SD card controller. So now ARM processor can any can have any higher end MCU and the required um, um, what to tell infrastructure required to handle those is included in the ARM itself in the processor itself. So this is first before coming to the current generation of ARM processors, we will talk about the ARM classic portfolio. So here we have. Uh, Classic portfolio is so we have various ARM architectures. We have ARM version version 4, ARM version 5, ARM version 6 architecture. So basically, um, these architecture versions have no, no correlation or relevance to the ARM processor core part numbers as you see. ARM version 4, so anyone who has worked on ARM 70 DMA because Till now also ARM 70 DMM is popular because of its ease of programming and its availability and the cost of the chip. So still many of the out of 100, at least 20 customers are still working on ARM 70 DMI. So we have ARM 70 DMI, then we have secure cores, then ARM V5, we have ARM 9. Basically ARM V5 supports porting of Linux. So if at all anyone is working on this, ARM9 processor core series, so it supports porting of Linux. It has memory management unit, but ARM version 4, which is uh, ARM 70 DMI, it's only micro C Linux only can be ported. But for ARM V5, ARM9, you can port the Linux. ARM V6 was your Cortex M0 or M0 Plus, which is the lower end M series, and ARM11. ARM11 was, it did not come to um, embedded at all, it it went to the enterprise Java application. So Z stands for Zazzle technology and J stands for Java. So development of the ARM architecture. So here we have uh, a previous slide we saw version 4, version 5, version 6. So here we can see version 7, version 8. Now it's version 9. We have also Cortex A9, Cortex X9. Cortex X processor, which is based on core version core A B9. So V8 was up to 64 bit processor, so it can be 32 bit or 64 bit. So after V6, which was we have a Cortex M series, and V7, V7 was your whatever the current technology uh, uses, which is Cortex A, Cortex R, and Cortex M. So from V7, ARM came up with a breakup in their breakthrough in their technology, and they came up with a different processor codes, V7, A, V7, R, V7M. A stands for application-specific uh, um, um, software or application-specific um, code or whatever product you want to develop. V7 star stands for real-time, and M stands for microcontrollers. So microcontroller is like, it's a wide range of Cortex-M series are available processor series from ARM is available and it can be used for any microcontroller specific application. V8 takes its place uh, only in your um, smartphones or wherever there is high amount of data computing is required, high amount of data processing is required. 64-bit processors takes place there. Usually in high performance computing, HPC is where V8 goes actually. Even in smartphones also we have V8. Basically, uh, higher end devices like smartphone and all, they have big, big little combination. So we have uh, big means if we have a V8 processor with 64-bit architecture, it will be a V7 architecture with 32-bit. 
So both will be primary and secondary processor because we have multi-core processors. You might be knowing in smartphones while purchasing, but I've seen quad processor, octa processor, dual processor like that. Okay, so this is just a processor series. Uh, I have already explained uh, Cortex A, R, and M. So you know we have various series: M0, M0 plus, M3, M4, M7. We have M33, M23, M85, M55. All these are the various um, ARM processor series for Cortex M. Similarly, we have for R. We similarly we have for A. So Cortex A53, A57, all are 64 bit processor core. So, whereas Cortex A5, A7, A9, A8, A12, A15, A17 all are 30 bit processor cores. So, there are many. I have just listed a few. Okay. So, so this is a typical example of an ARM based system. So you can see here we have an ARM processor core here, which has a debug port. So we can use any external third party debugger to whatever the IDE you're using GUI. With that debugger, we can have peek into the processor and see how the processor is executing, uh, how the processor is updating the memory, reading the registers, peripherals, everything. All this you can see it here. Okay, so usually to this processor, you have I, I, FIQ or IRQ, interrupt or interrupt requests come to that. So interrupt whatever comes from the various peripherals uh, of the processor or a microcontroller will be coming to this interrupt controller, okay? Uh, that is coming from this peripherals and interrupt controller will accordingly uh, interrupt the processor through giving FIQ or IRQ. IRQ is a standard interrupt request, FIQ is the fast interrupt request. So the only difference between IRQ and FIQ is in ARM, each interrupt or exception modes has its own set of stack and the link stack pointer and the link register. In FIQ, what happens? They have their own registers, which is R R7 to R12, which is why it is called fast because when processor enters that mode, those register sets need not be pushed or pushed or popped off from the stack. So the time to push and pop again it takes 46 cycles. So that amount of registers pushing or popping will be avoided. So it is called fast interrupt. That's it. Then you also have custom peripherals. Okay. And here we have all external DMA, external memory interface, on chip memory, EPP bridge. I'll come to this. Then uh, to external memory, we can connect either external flash, SD RAM. This is all on chip memory or on chip RAM, on chip flash. Everything comes here. Anything connected to the external interfaces, your external flash, it can be NAND flash, NOR flash, it can be RAM, SD RAM, DD RAM, depending on what sort of application you want. Okay, so these peripherals are uh, interrupt controller and peripherals usually are connected. Um, by this DMA, your, your memory, your on chip memory, all these are directly connected to the CPU through AMBA XI bus. So AMBA is an hype advanced management bus architecture and uh, that is the high performance bus so any blocks cpu blocks or any blocks like you can contain consider these these are different blocks any blocks connected to these bus uh, will be operating at the same frequency as that of the cpu so whichever blocks which doesn't need that full speed operation can come to the app usually the peripheral blocks your core link peripherals, custom peripherals will come through, will be connected through APP. APP is advanced peripheral bus. And this APP bus is connected to the AMBA bus, bus to this bridge. So this bridge will decide what will be the speed or frequency with which these blocks connected will operate at. Is it half of it, one fourth of it, one eighth of it, or it's a full speed? Okay. So this is again a repetition. ARM v7, ARM v8 has an MMU. So, like I told, ARM version 5 architecture, which comes with all ARM 9 processors, they supported MMU memory management unit, which is a key peripheral or a key block to um, translate your virtual address to physical address, which is very much required, or a key requirement or a mandatory requirement for a Linux application. So, Linux, you know, each 
application, each function, each task run as it's, it's running in its own space. So this conversion of virtual space to physical space or virtual memory to physical memory is handled by the memory management unit. And this specific block is available in ARM um, V7A, ARM um, V8 architecture. And it's available also in ARM um, V5. ARM 9 processor code. Real time doesn't have MMU, but it has MPU. MPU is memory protection unit. So memory protection unit is you using the MPU block, you can define your own address region specifying this particular region will have read access only, write access only, uh, like that you can assign the permissions and control those access. Microcontroller profile is your ARM Cortex M processor series, where it, this is gaining its importance mainly in IoT. The reason in IoT is because of its less power consumption and it has wide range of Cortex M processors availability from M0, M0 plus to higher in M, M55, M85. So, as you know, if as the footprint of the processor is less, it will be easy to be used in the IoT application. Okay. So now uh, let's come to the software development tools. So before that, why should anyone invest in software development tools? Though we have open source tools now, where every we are startup companies and all those who cannot um, go for with commercial license and all, they still tend to use the open source tools, but there is a reason why um, any customer or a user has to go for the license version or a software development tools. See, as the complexity of the hardware is increasing, okay, maybe the hardware cost may decrease, but the software cost is going to increase exponentially. Because as and when more and more uh, components are coming into the hardware, testing of the developing program for that, deeper meaning that is all uh, is a cost factor. It means there is a cost involved in it. Um, like it's a time consuming task to develop such a uh, complex code um, uh, for the hardware. So software development tools will make your life easier. So you will have better support, everything. Suppose even if you, uh, let me tell you, open source compiler, Hoover uses, if they find any issue in the compiler, for some reason you're getting errors or you're able to, Linker is able to compile the project, but you're not able to debug, your code is not executing. So in such cases, it is very difficult um, to debug the issue. So for that, you should have a dedicated team who can solve this issue. But if you go for commercial license, yes, we the ARM, um, because if you go for ARM um, software license, ARM um, will be happy to help you and they'll be able to quickly solve the issues. Maybe in a couple of hours or in a couple of days, depending on the complexity and the type of the issue. So coming to this uh, software. So ARM um, software development tools actually comes in Two, two solutions they offer. One is MDK, Microcontrol Development Kit. Another is ARM DS, Development Studio. So MDK stands for Microcontrol Development Kit. Microcontrol in the sense, this MDK software tools supports only ARM-based microcontrollers. It doesn't support um, any higher end like Cortex-A and R because they are, they are processors, multiprocessors. But here there is microcontroller units. So ARM7, ARM9, and all Cortex M based MCUs are supported in MDK. We will discuss support the components of this in the coming slides. Then for our uh, process, if for the customers are working on higher end process, higher end application for they're using Cortex A or Cortex R 32 bit or 64 bit, then customer can go for development studio. Basically, Development Studio is a single single universal tool suit which will support all ARM processors from lower end ARM 7, ARM 9 to Cortex M to higher end 64 bit processor. Okay, but MDK is basically tailored and designed or focused specifically for MCUs. So we have better debugging and all trace features, everything required is very well designed and configured in MDK. Whereas in DS specifically, um, they have kept in, kept in your SOC or ASSP, application specific device or system on chip, a kind of that for DS. So we have debug adapters, JTAG debuggers, which I was talking in the 
I'm talking about explaining this uh, typical ARM system, JTAG debuggers. So JTAG debuggers is the one which is a third, third it chats. It's an external debugger, hardware debugger, which connects to the debug port of the processor. And that will help to give the view of the processor through the IDE, through Kyle IDE or DS. So in DS also we have uh, support for debuggers in Kyle also. Because both the software solutions are given by ARM, all the JTAG debuggers offered by ARM are well supported in both except DStream. DStream is a JTAG debugger which supports all the ARM processor cores, but it works only with the DS. It doesn't work with MDK. So earlier ARM used to give a lot of development boards to uh, usually customers used to buy that board and uh, first it hands on on the board and then try to develop or design their own prototype. But now ARM um, has brought has uh, put an end to that and only one board is now offered by ARM, which is Cortex M3 based board for a minute. Okay, so now let's see MDK. As I told MDK stands for microcontroller development kit. So this is a low-cost tools for ARM7, ARM9, Cortex-M and R4 MCUs. So it supports all um, microcontrollers based on these ARM processor cores. You have core and peripheral simulation, flash support. So flash support is um, for each of the devices what um, Kyle MDK supports. Basically, suppose if you take Cortex-M from NXP. <clears throat> so NXP, for their particular device will give the device family pack. So that DFP has to be downloaded uh, from Kyle, Kyle IDE through pack installer, there is an option. And in device family pack, you'll have all the device rated files like device specific header file to access all the registers associated for configuring special function register, then um, flash programming algorithms, peripheral libraries, anything associated supporting file required to program that particular MCU will be given by the silicon vendor. So that is flash support, core and peripheral simulation. Basically, the simulation was uh, given for the early ARM devices which are supported in Kyle MDK, which is for Microvision 4. Uh, you can see the picture here. I put the Microvision 5 now. So it's present Microvision 5 and Microvision 5 does not have simulation support for any devices. If at all you are using Microvision 4, yes, then you can still simulate the peripherals. So what is simulation? Simulation is without connecting any hardware, you want to test the entire functionality of your code, how it works on the peripherals or your entire uh, code, how it performs as if you're executing the code on the hardware. So you can simulate all the peripherals including the peripherals which are configured through pins like SPI, I2C, USB, CAN, ADC, Ethernet, UART, all these peripherals can be simulated. So microcontroller development kit MDK comes with the GUI which is Microvision, we call it as, and in this GUI you have all the required uh, tools integrated in it. You have compiler, assembler, linker, simulator, debugger, everything, and RTOS, everything is in, integrated in the ID. You may be surprised to see GCC compiler is supported. That's because ARM is investing in Linaro GCC. This is the GCC compiler, which goes with the Linux, um, Linaro Linux, what they usually give in their development boards. ARM also offers higher end development boards. Based on 64 bit processor, we have Juno boards, um, and all which supports Linux porting where Linux is already ported. So if at all you want to develop any application on that Linux and compile, they give Linaro GCC. That compiler is integrated in the Linux kernel itself. So GCC ARM compiler is supported. Another advantage here why GCC compiler is supported is if at all any customer is using open source tools and if the customer happens to develop a product which goes to safety critical application, then getting the product certified with open source compiler is impossible. So for that, usually customers go to professional licenses, they go with commercial licenses and here ARM compiler is already safety certified to it is UV certified to develop the code for a safety related applications. 
and if in that case in that case migration of your code from the open source to kyle will be easy open source that is gcc compiler to arm compiler will be easy because arm compiler supports more than 90 to 95 percent of gcc compiler options so that way migrating of your code will be easy from gcc to kyle so that is the advantage uh, arm has given and it there supports the um, GCC compiler. So trace support is specifically for um, Cortex M devices, basically for higher end. M0 plus is a, a lower end Cortex M, which has a trace feature, which comes with micro trace buffer, where a part of your RAM is dedicated for capturing the trace. Other than that, M3, M4, M7, higher end Cortex M devices have the trace blocks. So let's not get into trace. Um, I'll certainly do one more session on that. Once I have done, so I'll be doing uh, maybe the second version of it. Then you also have middleware stacks. So what is middleware stacks? Middleware stacks is specifically for higher end communication peripherals. Like um, we have here TCP, IP, we have Ethernet. You want to create flash system, uh, file system in the flash or RAM. You want to use for CAN, USB device, host for all those. So these are the higher end communication peripherals and configuring these peripherals is not a, um, it's not so uh, easy, uh, easily it can be done. It's a complex process because these peripherals follow a protocol. So these are all serial based protocol uh, peripherals and whenever protocol comes, one has to be very careful in configuration of such peripherals. So to make the life of the user easy, ARM has given the middleware stacks where you will be getting these stacks in the library format. User has to just call them in their application and um, the particular API is defined by ARM. And low, in the low level, it, it initializes all the registers of the processor and takes care of the configuration of the peripheral. And the same can be used for communication as well. So that is what comes as part of middleware stack. So one thing to note here is Kyle MDK also comes with RT RTOS, real-time operating system, which is called RTX, real-time executive. And this RTOS was first to become part of CMC's RTOS. And the source code of the RTOS is also provided in the demo version of the Kyle. So Kyle, if anyone wants to have um, a feel or hands-on before going to commercial license, you are free to do so. You can go to Kyle.com and download the demo version, and that comes with the RTX RTOS, which comes with the source code of the kernel. Then we have debug hardware. I already spoke about these JTAG debuggers. These are all the ULink debuggers. Many of you might be aware of it or many might be using it. Evaluation boards, a few has been shown, but these are all now obsolete. Okay, it's the same thing, explanation in the pictorial format. So Microvision 5 is the what when you download from the Kyle site. That's the demo version what you download. That comes with the Microvision GUI interface. You have the pack installer. This is the pack installer which comes with, uh, to which you can download the required device support, uh, a DFP from the Kyle IDE. And the demo version also comes with ARM C or C++ compiler. Okay. So with Kyle, you can develop C program as well as C++. And these are the various software packs. This is the device family pack. You'll have startup code, peripheral libraries, flash programming algorithms, everything. So startup code is one when the when you give the parent reset to the processor. Last webinar I did on the uh, explanation of the startup code and why startup code is required and how um, processor enters the startup code in through software, how it does. I had done that and the recording might be available on our site. And um, CMCs, we have various flavors. This is Microcortex Microcontrol Software Interface Standard. This was brought in joint collaboration with ARM, Silicon Vendor, and Development Tool Vendor, like Kyle, IR, or Visa License. Then this is your middleware stacks, which comes as part of MDK Professional. So MDK has various editions, and MDK Professional is the higher end edition of the Kyle. So these are the JTAG debuggers, and you have evolution notes. So this is about just a software pack, what all you get. This is how it looks. 
So you have configuration files, header files, device parameter flash algorithms in this device family pack, whatever you download. So this is how the, I mean, this is a basic one which everyone will be knowing how whenever you write a C program or an assembly program, how the final output file is linked, generated by the linker in what format. So Kyle MDK includes all these um, components, compiler, assembler, linker, format, converter, libraries, librarian, everything. Okay. So, so whatever C program or assembly, uh, C, C++ program you write, it will be compiled by the ARM CC. If you are writing assembly program, it will be assembled by ARM ASM. So both ARM CC compiler and ARM ASM will generate the OBJ file. The op linker takes the object files and any library. See, if at all you used any library in your uh, C program, like string related stuff or any um, floating related anything, it will include those libraries. It will link it and then either it can it can create a library file so you can use that as a template for other projects or it will create a final output file the debug information file which can help you with further doing the source level debugging in the Kyle debugger using the external JTAG debugger. So that further whatever output file you're generating if you want to create an hex file a bin file or Motorola file or whatever you can use the from ELF utility which comes uh, as part of Kyle installation when you install the software so that you can convert to binary or hex file. So these are the various software pack variants actually. So we have device pack, CMC pack, middleware pack. So as I showed in the MDK block, this is how it is. So you can see uh, device pack is usually given by the silicon vendor, whether it's NXPST or microchip, whoever is giving the microcontroller, they'll give this device pack. CMC pack, this blue color is given by ARM. And middleware pack will be given by the silicon vendor, tool vendor, or third party. So this middleware pack, which I was talking about the stacks, middleware stacks, even ARM gives, uh, many third party vendors also give, and even silicon vendors, suppose XT are using or NXP are using, they also sometimes give their own middleware stacks. Okay. Okay, so that brings me to this end of this um, software uh, introduction to some software development tools. Uh, in this, I have not covered um, development studio. Maybe that I'll cover as part as the next webinar. Development studio, which is a universal tool set for all the ARM processes. Okay, let me see. Any questions you have? No questions. Okay, so if team is new, I guess I see this uh, team that in my regular webinars very regularly. Thank you so much for your time and support. Uh, but anyone wants to uh, go for the procurement of uh, ARM licenses or debuggers or anything, so please feel free to send me an email at keita at gsasmsdl.com or you can call me. Or if team is looking to uh, is expecting me to conduct any uh, webinar, any specific feature or topic on uh, Kyle or uh, so ARM software solution. So I shall be glad to do that. Okay, so uh, <laughs> thank you, Ram Krishna. Glad that you attended. Thank you so much. So please feel free to text me, call me, or email me. Um, I shall be able to help you out. 
even if you don't want, even if you're not looking any for software license, but you want any sort of technical clarification or something, yes, I'll be here to help you out. So thank you team for your time and have a pleasant evening. I look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Thank you.